That sound means this is another episode of How to Kill a Piano. This is episode number nine of our weekly podcast series. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing. I, I'm I'm very flattered that you are all here and you're on board and you're listening to this week after week. It really does warm my heart. Or perhaps I know that there are some of you who are late to the game who are just tuning in for the first time and are binging our episodes. That's really cool, too. Thanks so much for binging this content. That's pretty crazy that anyone would binge any content from me. This episode of How to Kill a Piano, unfortunately, is not going to include more of the story. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. The first reason, you may have noticed that there is no piano music happening right now. That is because my beloved Yamaha uh, keyboard, my P70 electronic Yamaha keyboard, is... Well, it's not that it's no more. It's just having... It's having an off day. So if you go to our blog at howtokillapiano.com, if you haven't been there yet, please go there. It's pretty cool. Uh, You can see all of our backlog of episodes. You can do some of the reading of some of the older content. You can see some wonderful artwork from artist Jesse Rubenfeld as well over there at howtokillapiano.com. If you haven't visited my YouTube channel, you can see all sorts of fun things there as well. You can see Well, you can listen, of course, to this. Perhaps you're already there listening to this now. But you can also go and watch some neat magic that I have put out into the world if you're a fan of the mind-reading genre of magic. There's some really cool stuff there. There's some just standard magic there as well. And I'd appreciate you going to have a listen. But if you do go to howtokillapiano.com this Monday, or rather this morning, I posted a photograph of my Yamaha electric piano in, in pieces. It is a beautiful instrument that I have had for a long time. Actually, I purchased it in college, but I purchased it at a garage sale of all places when I was going to Eastern Michigan University in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Ypsilanti, probably best known not only for their wonderful university, but their world-famous, most phallic building in the world, the Ypsilanti Water Tower, or as the locals tend to call it, the Brick Dick. Now, I have been trying and campaigning for years, ever since I was a student at the university, to abolish that name because I think there is a much better term that I would love to have had catch on, but unfortunately never did. And that is simply aquacock, only because I think that just feels much better in the throat, don't you? It's just a lot more fun to say. One of my dear friends um, and, and professors that I met was while I was at the at Eastern Michigan University pursuing pursuing a degree in electronic media film and psychology, if that's not a mouthful. There's a theme of this episode, I guess. Uh, that's my dear friend Paul. And he, at the time, was a, uh, a math lecturer at, univers- at, at uh, the University of um, Eastern, Eastern Michigan University. And we met just because I used to spend a lot of time outside, and so did he for various reasons. So we met in between classes, and he became a lifelong friend because he knows how to chat up strangers, especially an oddball like me that usually wants very little to do with people trying to talk to me in public when I'm trying to get away from the world, although I do love people. They are my species, after all, as Maud might say. In any case, uh, I used to hold a weekly potluck at my house. Uh, Every week, I would gather my friends uh, over. Every Wednesday, we would eat delicious vegan food that uh, everybody of all walks of eating would come and enjoy and bring some things, whether they were vegan or not. In fact, most people at the party weren't, but we all shared some delicious vegan food together. I've been a lifelong vegan now for about 15 years of my life, uh, thanks to the positive influence of some people I really do love and care about. But one day, Paul brought his kids, love the kids that they are. They're not kids anymore. They're all grown up uh, and off uh, running, running good things into the world. But they said to me at the time, George, it's not Mother Earth, it's Father Earth. And I said, why? And they said, because of the Ypsilanti water tower. My response, without thinking, as I generally don't always do, was, how do you explain the Grand Canyon? And they said, what? And 
now my brain has kicked in and I'm starting to think. And I said, you know what? Go ask your father. So they came back and eventually they decided it's not Mother Earth. It's not Father Earth. It's a a hermaphroditic Earth. And that just always makes me laugh. So when I think of Ypsilanti, I think of the water tower. When I think of the water tower, I think of that story. But also my piano, because my electric piano, I don't have a a real piano in my in my home, I just have the electric one only because I just don't have the space to to keep the old Hamilton brother piano that the story was inspired by. And if you go to the blog, you can see photographs of that. That was either last week or the week before that I posted those. That piano lives at my folks' house in uh, just about maybe 30 minutes from where I am here in Michigan. And it is permanently on display properly in their living room, not in their basement, although growing up it did exist in their basement. But uh, the way I obtained my Yamaha Electric P70 piano was I was out on my bike uh, attending one of my favorite uh, events of the year. I I believe this was part of the event of the year, which was a subdivision-wide garage sale. And my friend, who was not quite my friend at the time, named Well, actually, at the time, he didn't have a name because he was the man of many names. And the man of many names would change his name every single day. So I was never sure what to call him. Although today, he is mostly known as Misha Tuesday, even on a Monday like today. And Misha had just been voted Washtenaw County's premier classical artist, which is pretty cool. So to celebrate... I hope he doesn't mind me telling the story. But to celebrate, Misha decided that he would uh, celebrate with some cocktails, have a garage sale, and sell every single one of his belongings, which included the piano that, in part, won him the award Washtenaw County's Best Classical Artist. Now, I was very excited to see a piano in a garage sale, an electric piano, especially one with 88 keys and one that has the Yamaha name on it because Yamaha pianos are amazing. They, they are some of the best of the best. So I asked how much. He gave me the price, uh, which was, oh, man, it was a steal at the time. And I had been, for about 20 years of my life, I, I did a lot of festival work, outdoor performing, uh, on the street and doing little shows. And I had been uh, at that time doing something called Standstill Theater, which was me doing a a silent mind reading act, rather a a magic and mind reading act without saying a word on the street where I would gather hundreds of people around me without saying a word and, and perform. Now, to somebody just passing by, it would look like I was a living one of those living statue people, the people who paint themselves in silver or bronze, whatever, and stand really, really still until people drop money into their bucket and then move a little bit. I I did a little bit of that, too. But the main purpose of me being there was to do uh, a show. And every 15 minutes or so, the statue would come to life, gather a crowd and actually perform. I would... uh, don blindfolds and duplicate people's drawings. I would uh, tell pe- tell people or reveal what playing cards people were thinking of. I would predict and influence the arrangement that people would line themselves up in and many, many other things. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it just took a toll on me and I retired that act after 20 years last last season and I will miss it very much because there were folks that came year after year after year and I get to watch people grow up and then bring their kids it was crazy Uh, lots of fun in any case because of that I would often have many singles or many dollar bills from wonderful contributions like folks uh, folks like yourself who have been kind enough to donate to this podcast which by the way if you would like to do so you can go to howtokillapiano.com and click our donation button and make a contribution you're absolutely under no obligated obligation to do so but every little bit helps and allows us to uh, keep this podcast going uh, because right now it's a strange world we're all living in uh, so I appreciate that very much so thank you again to all of you who have done that thus far and you can set up by the way you can set up a contribution month to month if you want to, or just a one-time donation. Every little bit helps. There are some suggested donation amounts, but you're welcome to just put in whatever amount you'd like. If you have only a dollar or 50 cents uh, and that's all you can afford, you know, that's that's wonderful. And every little bit does help keep this 
going. Uh, this is not a free venture on my part. This does cost me money to produce every week, week in and week out. It costs me money for the hosting. It costs me money for the specific podcast uh, uh, service that I'm using to send this out into the world. And of course, all the equipment has cost some cash as well. But most of all, it's just our time that I am more than happy to do because this has been a lot of fun. In any case, I digress. So I, I asked Misha Tuesday if he would accept payment in all singles because I happen to have just the, the, the right amount. So I biked home, I counted out my singles, and I biked back, and somehow uh, he, he agreed. I felt really guilty taking this piano off his hands only because uh, he, just, he just won this award because of this piano, and I wasn't sure he was in a complete sound of mind. So I said, you know what? Tomorrow, if you wake up and you decide you do want this piano back, please get in touch with me. I, I'll be happy to trade back. Give me the money back. I'll give you your piano back and no hard feelings. Uh, fortunately, he didn't want it back, and I've had it ever since. And we have become friends ever since. Misha is an accomplished hip, uh, hypnotist and magician himself and has done some really cool things all over the United States. So anyway, that is the story of how the piano came into my life. However, because we had these potlucks every Wednesday, my housemate at the time and, and dear friend, um, who, which will go nameless at the moment, unfortunately spilled a glass of red wine all over my piano one day. <laughs> and uh, promptly went to bed. Fortunately, all the folks at the potluck helped me unscrew every single screw inside, which was hundreds of screws, by the way, clean out the apparatus, clean off all the circuitry, and somehow, once we got it back together, it still worked. And it has been working and working for uh, 15 plus years at this point. Um, just about just around 15 years, 14 years, right around there is, is about how long I've had this piano. Fast forward to this past week, the piano decided to start getting a little bit of crackle to the to the sound, and then it just decided to go kaput. So I decided that it was time to, instead of just checking the power supply, which I've also done, to take the whole thing apart by myself here when we are in our self-isolation and quarantine moments and spend the next 14 hours taking it apart, cleaning all the contacts, unplugging everything, and piecing it all back together. Now, throughout this whole process, there were a few people that contacted me privately and offered to donate their electric keyboards to the cause. And I really appreciate that. There were there were two people that were really, really kind in saying, hey, I don't have uh, an electric piano necessarily, but I have a keyboard that we would love to just donate to you. And thank you so much for that. And I said, let's let's wait and see what happens. I'm still trying to get this thing I'm, it's still in CPR mode. I'm still trying to resuscitate it, and I haven't given up hope yet. But, ladies and gentlemen, I have some good news. The piano lived. I got it all back together. Couldn't figure out where eight of the screws went. But once I figured that out, due uh, thanks to some very helpful YouTube videos that I found on people disassembling the same model, once I got it back together, plugged it in, started it up, Oh my gosh, not only is it working, it sounds better than ever. Ah. That said, I did spend some time looking at what Yamaha offers nowadays, and oh my goodness, there are some beautiful, gorgeous instruments out there on the market that ah, they just do so many wonderful things. And I was thinking, man, if I only had fifteen to $20,000 to buy an electric piano, holy crap, uh, the things that I could do in the background of this from different voices and, and, and music and things I could compose for this whole project would be amazing. But I do have a workable piano. And thank you to everybody who showed support through all of that because it was a little bit nerve-wracking to have that whole thing in pieces. But we prevail. And the piano lives again. Somebody actually posted on the, our Facebook page, and if you don't follow us on Facebook, please, please, please come over to Facebook and like How to Kill a Piano over there as well, that they, they saw the picture and they said, well, I guess that's how you kill a piano. Like it's some weird self-fulfilling process prophecy. But the truth is... Pianos will never go away. 
they will always be part of society and they will always continue to live on. Much like this podcast has continued to live on and this story has continued to live on ever since its very first iteration that popped into my head. Every time we revisit the project, it always shapes into something slightly different than before. And I think it is currently better than it has ever been. And that's that's partly thanks, thanks to you guys for tuning in, for listening, encouraging the story, for sharing the story, and, and being willing to come back week after week, be willing to donate week after week, and uh, keep this whole project afloat. So again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I promise we will be back with more story very soon, and along with some wonderful piano backing as well. So thanks again. Until next week, I'm George Tate. Be well, be safe, and of course, I love you. Bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum bum ba dum bum ba dum bum bum.